Hello, hello, hello. Um, today we are going to talk quickly about how to merge reports when you are sharding a Playwright Suite. As a reminder, my name is Ben. I run a uh, QA agency out of Michigan that's uh, purely onshore. We do a lot of work with Playwright Automation. We work a lot with different companies who are trying to get Playwright Automation off the ground as well as uh, augment existing uh, teams doing a lot with Playwright Automation. Um, so Playwright doesn't actually have native support today about uh, how to merge reports after uh, sharding. That being said, it is a very common topic in the board, and I know that they've gotten close to, I think, wanting to solve this. There's a really solid um, thread in uh, GitHub that I'll probably try to link in this video where you can follow progress there. For now, though, um, we use a... Uh, node library um, that was built to do this. Um, you can see the URL right here. I'll also link it. Um, so let's go into our demo. Um, you can see that we already have it installed. Uh, you can install it just by running your install. Um, it should have, when it installs, uh, it should include a couple different files, but um, just to call them out, I have a folder called merge reports. You have your base64 encoder, your merge reports.spec file, merge reports in your type.ts. Um, the thing to note is essentially that when you merge reports in with, with this library, um, you're really just running another uh, terminal command. So we're going to go look at our demo and we can see that we're actually just running MPX playwright tests and then we're just running the file slash merge reports and it's then uh, running that function. So um, first things first, this function only works if it can find all of the files that you want to merge. So if there is a file that doesn't match exactly this function, it will fail, um, which is a bit of a headache. And actually, I'm really curious if somebody has a better way of doing this because um, for now, what we have to do is anytime we adjust the number of shards or we adjust the kind of the infrastructure, we do have to go and make sure that we adjust the report. That being said, the outcome is well worth the hassle because if we go look and we look at a sort of existing run, and by the way, apologies in advance because my computer's internet is very slow. So let's see if this even gets to the next page. And if it doesn't, this might not be the best video and you might never see this video. Perfect. Okay. So you can see that um, in this case, any time that you shard a... Um, Playwright Suite, it's going to spit out natively its own artifact as part of that sharding. So um, in this case, we have demo uh, example, and here's a matrix, and there's five different shards in that matrix. And so each one of these um, shards has its own report, Playwright 1, Playwright 2, Playwright 3, Playwright 4, Playwright 5. Now, for more detail on just like sharding and matrixes, I can definitely make another video on that. But just to quickly scroll up into our um, YAML file, and we go and we look at that matrix, uh, you can see it right here where um, you're having it run and then you're actually then doing your upload. And the key is that you have a shard index and you are basically customizing the report name based off of the shard that it's in, based off of the matrix. So I'm um, happy to get into a video in more detail there. The focus of this video is just to what to do and how to, to sort of bring it into one report. So um, certainly particularly when I was first doing this, I it's not the end of the world to have individual reports. You can just download them, you can open them, but it's really, particularly at scale, not a great solution because now you're asking a human to go and, like in this case, there's only one failure, so maybe they would go and just download uh, four out of five, which is right here, but when you have, you know, in some cases we have 20 to 30 to 40 different shards happening at once, and it, it you know, it's just always better to have it merged. So, Let's look at the infrastructure of what's happening. So um, like you've probably seen before in this demo, you have the install, you have um, a number of jobs happening. Um, it all comes to this last file called merge reports. Now what is the key about this first and foremost is that this job has to be set to wait for the other jobs to complete. So if we go down and we look at our merge job, you can see that it's gonna always have needs, right? And for those that I'm hoping are familiar, 
that essentially just tells it, hey, it, this needs to wait for these other jobs to be done before it can run. Now, um, additionally, the reason why it needs those jobs is because all of those jobs, if they work properly, are going to upload an artifact. And so the first thing that it's going to do is um, we're going to pull in Playwright, which is important, as all jobs that use Playwright are. And then we're going to use this download artifact action. And then we're going to make sure to display it. Now, you don't really need that, but that's just how I do it. Um, we're going to then install the um, merge uh, node module, and then we're going to run the merge. Now, um, if that doesn't work, nine times out of ten, it doesn't work because you've uh, mixed up the file structure and the file structure doesn't align in GitHub Actions with those artifacts with what you are looking for in your um, file here when it comes to merge reports. That being said, there is a weird situation sometimes where if there was an existing cache that uh, GitHub Actions was using from a previous run, sometimes that seems to cause this function to fail. Um, I don't exactly no, but normally what I do is just make sure that Playwright, um, whenever we kick off a build in GitHub Actions, we're clearing out the cache. Um, and then it's simple as uh, uploading the, the merged artifact. So um, it, it's actually really straightforward once you understand the intricacies. So let's just do a quick, quick repeat of what's going on. Um, the shards themselves are going to spit out a bunch of artifacts those artifacts need to align with the file paths that you've given the function um, merge reports. See how I have uh, one, one, uh, playwright report one underscore five, and here we have uh, playwright report one underscore five, right? Two, three, four, we can go and we can look, and it says two, three, four, five, right? Storage test one, two, let's go make sure that those are there. Storage test one, two, right? And then um, here's your uh, storage state one, and there, right there, is your storage state one, right? And then um, you can see that I've already run this, and then it just merges it all together right here, and it spits out demo merge. Now, I have a different video on what we're going to do with that. Normally, at, at Loop, what we do is we have the environment just automatically upload that file to a GitHub Pages account. But, um, yeah, pretty straightforward stuff once you understand the different tool set. Um, absolutely critical if you are going to run uh, this Playwright suite at scale in something like GitHub Actions to merge the reports. Otherwise, honestly, it's just not worth trying to shard, trying to, to, to get the parallelization. By the way, I'm a huge advocate for sharding. Um, it, it just makes everything go so much faster. Um, it, it's really one of the most unbelievable features of Playwright. It is something that I would recommend. So uh, that was how to merge reports within GitHub Actions after a sharded run. Thanks.